Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go into the press and check out what is happening there today around the country. Then at the end of the video, we'll go into the comment section and take a look at what is happening there also. Now, as you can see, back outside again today, another lovely day here in Madrid, and we have to take advantage of these sunny days because they're not gonna last for very long. Winter is just around the corner, and in this part of Spain, winters can be cold and too cold to sit outside and film videos. Now we'll go into the press and take a look at what is happening around the country today. The first news outlet we're gonna look at is RTVE, the state broadcaster. Check out what's happening there. And the main news stories that the state broadcaster are going with today, as we're gonna see here on the left, talking about the La Palma volcano eruption. And then on the right, the 10 year anniversary of the end of the terrorist group ETA, or ETA. And as we can see in the headline here, more than 370 ETA crimes that haven't been resolved, with somebody saying that no victim that hasn't yet received justice should be forgotten. And the majority of the unresolved murders took place in the 1980s, when ETA was killing somebody every three days, and a lot of the cases can no longer be tried because they happened too long ago. So the topic of terrorism in this country still a touchy subject, but luckily Spain has turned the page on an ugly episode in its history. I remember when I first came to Spain back in 1991 and saw images of terrorist attacks on the television. I think they were mainly car bombs back then, but some very strong images still in my mind today. And then when I came to live in Madrid at the end of the 1990s, these attacks were still unfortunately taking place and I had a couple of near misses. I remember there was an attack in the early 2000s, very close to the Santiago Bernabeu football stadium, and I was living in that area at the time, and another bomb exploded on one of the bus routes that I used to take frequently, but luckily I wasn't going through the area at the time. So a couple of near misses, but that's what it was like living in Madrid back in the early 2000s. I also worked in a military school teaching English for many, many years, and the security at that school was very, very strict. But thankfully, as I said, this unfortunate chapter in Spanish history has closed. Now back into the news, this time El Pais, and this article caught my attention today, and it's about the Brussels-London Brexit dispute and how it's threatening to resurrect a tougher border in Gibraltar. Spanish Foreign Affairs Minister Mr Alvarez is meeting this Tuesday with the mayors of the neighbouring region of the Rock due to the fear of a return of the controls in La Berja. And as we can see, the spectre of a hard Brexit threatens Gibraltar again. La Berja, far from disappearing, can become a daily nightmare for the almost 10,000 Spaniards who work in the British colony. If the ongoing negotiations do not bear fruit in time, the European Commission could require Spain to impose controls on passengers and goods that correspond to an external border of the EU, a point of entry and exit to the Schengen area. So Spain hoping that Brussels and London can sort these problems out because they don't want that hard border again. Because as we saw, some 10,000 Spanish people cross that border every day for work. So just when you think that some of these problems are sorted, Brexit rears its ugly head again, and what an ugly head it is. Now, we'll change the topic, and labour shortages are dominating headlines in a couple of press outlets here today. We'll take a look at this one first, the transport crisis that has reached Spain. The sector needs 16,000 drivers. And it goes on to say that even though this is one of the sectors that created the most amount of jobs in September, it's still unable to cover all of the demand and there are still some 16,000 vacancies in the sector. So a transport crisis in Spain, 16,000 workers needed, but that figure pales in comparison if we look at the construction sector, which needs 700,000 workers. And according to the article, less young people want to work in this sector. And professional training related to the sector is also seeing a drop in the amount of students. So 700 thousand people needed for the construction sector, 16,000 drivers needed for the transport sector, but Spain still has around 14% unemployment. Don't know what's going on, but it doesn't seem to add up. So what's the government most likely going to do to fill these positions? Probably what they did last time, open the border and allow people to come in from other countries to fill these jobs. Now changing the topic again, we saw a comment from somebody the other day saying that the cost of living in the UK is going up. Things are now more expensive there, especially when it comes to doing the shopping and putting petrol in the car. And the same thing is happening here in Spain. Very, very expensive to fill up the tank at the moment and also more expensive when you do your grocery shopping. And why are fuel prices so high at the moment? Well, according to El Confidencial, it's because the fuel companies are increasing their margins. 
And according to the CNMC, which is the competition watchdog here, fuel prices in Spain are now higher than in France. So the humble consumer here in Spain getting smashed everywhere we go. Doesn't matter if you're filling up the tank, you get smashed. Doesn't matter if you go to the shops to buy a few things, you get smashed. And those greedy fuel companies, according to that article, increasing their margins. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from yesterday's video. One here from Vermal Stu, the Japanese restaurants here, most of them are owned by the Chinese. So just imagine the taste. Yeah, Vermal, thanks for the comment. And obviously related to a comment that we saw yesterday, somebody asking whether or not there are a lot of Asian restaurants in this country. I said there are plenty of Chinese restaurants, plenty of Japanese restaurants, and every day you see more Indian restaurants and more Thai restaurants around the country. And I believe what you say in your comment is true, that a lot of the Japanese restaurants here are run by the Chinese. I know that's the case where I live here on the outskirts of Madrid, that a few restaurants that were Chinese a few years ago are now Japanese restaurants. One is called Ya Sushi. And given the fact that I'm not an expert on Japanese food, I can't comment about the taste. One here from She Saves, he invests, they travel. My favorite Spanish words are tonteria, porqueria, and gilipollas. Yeah, guys, thanks for the comment, and those would be three of my favorite words also. Tonteria, I use that one a fair bit. Porqueria, I also use it quite a lot. And gilipollas, I use on a daily basis. And that's because every day there is más tonteria, más porqueria, y lógicamente, más gilipollas. One here from T. Chopper. According to the ABC News, Victoria has surpassed Spain in the number of daily cases. Yeah, T. Chopper, thanks for the comment. And I do believe that to be the case, that Victoria now has more daily cases than Spain. I think the last time I checked, it was about 1,800 daily cases here and about 1,900 daily cases in Victoria, the majority being in the city of Melbourne. But the good news for people living in that part of Australia is that the lockdown, which has been in place for a long time now, is coming to an end on Thursday. So it looks as though some parts of Australia have finally realized that they're just gonna to have to live with the virus because it's impossible to eradicate. So good luck to anybody down there in Victoria with your Freedom Day, which starts on Thursday at 12 p.m. One here from Philip. Hi, Stuart. I'm just back from a short week-long trip to southern Spain. Perhaps it was because of the public holiday when I was there, but I was surprised to find that getting a parking space on the public street could be so problematic. In the limited time I was there, I twice found myself in uncomfortable situations over a parking space, for heaven's sake. Is this a common occurrence? Thanks, as always, for the updates. Regards, Philip. Yeah, Philip, thanks for the comment, and unfortunately it is a common occurrence in a lot of places around the country, difficult to find a place to park. And when there's a public holiday, like the one that we just had, a four-day public holiday, a lot of people get out and about, it can be very difficult to park, especially in some of the more touristy areas of the country. So street parking in Spain can be a bit of a problem. And finally, one from right away, when Australia's PM Morrison reports Australia is reopening, he's only talking about New South Wales. Yeah, right away, thanks for the comment, and obviously referring to something that we spoke about the other day, that Australia is reopening some parts of the country, and some Australians will be allowed to travel internationally Again, I'm not sure whether it's only New South Wales or whether Victorians will now be able to travel overseas and people will be allowed to travel to Victoria again, given the fact that they are reopening as of this week. And when it comes to the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, or ScoMo as he is known down there, if you didn't know much about Australian politics, you could easily think that he was the New South Wales Premier. And that's another sign of the lamentable state of Australian politics at the moment. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video up as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.